OK, perfect. So let's get started then. So today's webinar is focused on our pop up tool. Um, specifically, we'll be looking at our form type pop ups. So the agenda for today's session is, first of all, we will have a look at a couple of reasons why a pop-up might be useful. We'll then go through a couple of examples that um, you could use a pop-up for. And then what we're going to do is go together and actually build a form type pop-up. So build the smart form to then host within one of our pop-ups. Um, and we're also lucky enough to have one of our own customers, Steve, with us to share afterwards some of his own wisdom um, so we'll hand over to Steve in a short while. So first of all, why might you use a pop-up? So there's loads of reasons, but just to name a couple, the first would be to um, essentially increase the speed of which you're able to access contact information. Another reason might also be to promote content on a page that might not be visited very regularly by leads. Another would be to using um, our advanced features within our pop-up tool, you're actually able to target specific people um, to actually view the pop-up. So what might you use a pop-up for? So the first of all, um, the first option would be to sign up for a newsletter. So for something like that, you probably wouldn't have a really long form. It would probably just be an email address field. Another use for a pop-up would be to protect a gated asset. Again, you could just be asking for an email address in order for them to access a brochure, for example. Another example would be to request a demo, advertise an upcoming event, or perhaps just to advertise some general information. So let's go ahead and actually get one built together. So in your Gator Mail environments, what we're going to be doing first is just building a very quick form to include in our pop-up. So the form type will be a smart form. I do apologise for my internet speeds, working from home uh, <laughs> happens to all of us. Perfect. So once you've given your smart form a name, all we need to do is go through these settings. So the first thing would be entering um, a redirect URL. So these are all sort of back end settings that we can apply to the form itself. These aren't necessarily making changes to the actual pop up. So what we can do is in the email address field, we can choose whether or not we are accepting standard addresses, as in we would allow Gmails and Hotmails, or we can choose to only accept business addresses in terms of not allowing Gmails and Hotmails. Everything else we can probably just brush over for now, but what I'm gonna do in the fields area here is just select the, the email address name, the email address field, sorry. So we've got lots of fields to choose from here, so I just need to find our one. So you can see email login is selected by default, hence it's greyed out because a form must include an email address field for it to be made live. Your submit rules are then what makes the form smart. So when someone clicks submit in one of the GateML smart forms, we can add contact to group, we can send them a campaign, we can send you a notification internally. So those submit rules are gonna come in really handy for things like newsletter signups. So someone is gonna give you their email address. What we can then do using these submit rules is automatically add those contacts to a group, which would then be used for all of your upcoming newsletters. So I won't add a submit rule in this example, but all we would need to do is click to edit, Select add to group. We would then choose the group that we want to drop these contacts into and then save and close. So before we can use this form within one of our Gator pop-ups, what we just need to do is activate it. So by clicking to save and get code, all I need to do here is tick the tick box to activate form and close. Now that's all done. 
This is a very, very quick and easy form for you to build to use in your pop-ups. So I can save and close that now and then go over to our pop-up environment. I can then create new. Now we've got a few different types of pop-ups that are available for you to use. Now promotional was the original pop-up that we built for you guys. It allows you to include an image, some text and a button that would ideally direct them to a different page on your website. The form info and custom types are relatively new. So your form type would actually allow you to include either a Gator Mouse smart form, which we just built, or if you're Gator Leads only, we do actually have a Gator Leads only form option for you. The only fields that you can use with that, however, would be first name, last name and email address. Informational is pretty similar to promo. Instead of the button directing you somewhere else on the website, however, it would just close the pop up. And then custom is available for you to experiment with your own JavaScript. So for our example, we're going to be focusing this on a newsletter sign up. So I'm going to select the form type. We'll just give it a name and click create. So setting up a pop up is very, very easy. So all we need to do is have a look at the content tab, the display tab, triggers and targeting. That's it. Four tabs and we're done. So within the content tab itself, this is actually where we're choosing what displays within the pop up itself. So your title here could be perhaps sign up for our newsletter. Your content is in a slightly longer description underneath. The next stage that we need to have a look at is choosing the form that's actually going to be included within this pop-up. So as I said, we've got two different types of forms here. The first is a Gator Leads form if you are working with Gator Leads only. The second is a Gator Mail smart form, which is where we're actually able to pull through one of those smart forms from Gator Mail. So by selecting the Gator Mail smart form type, I can then click to select and it's going to bring up all of the smart forms that we've got built within our Gator Mail environment. So I can then select the form that we just built together, which is email address alone. If I scroll down slightly further, now we can choose the details that display when someone actually clicks to submit. So if someone successfully submits their email address, they would see the message in this box here. So I could change this from your details have been submitted to thank you for signing up to our newsletter. What happens then is that the submit button changes to read close. So what we can either do is close the pop-up entirely or redirect them to a new page. If we want to take them somewhere else on the website, we just select the second option here, paste in the URL that you want to direct them to, so that once they've filled in that form, they can access a different page on the website. If you just select close, then they would remain on the page that they were previously. Then we can move over to the display. So this is how it actually looks. So we've got two different types of pop-ups themselves. So a window, which is this example here, or I can switch this to bar, and that would just display a bar at either the top or the bottom of your screen. When you select a window type, you can then choose where it displays. And if I scroll down slightly further, if we'd selected a bar type, we can choose how that button reads. But as we're using a window, we can ignore that for now. So these animations are fun. I personally spent far too long um, playing around with these, but you're essentially able to choose the animation for how the pop-up enters and exits your screen. Your image is then the icon that is being used in your pop-up. So by clicking to select, you'll see that we've got lots of different animated icons for you to use separated out into different categories. But if you wanted to use perhaps your own logo, then what you can do up here is move across to uploads. 
and you can choose an image for you to upload. So a logo or perhaps some specific imagery that you guys have created yourselves. But if not, you're able to just use one of our sort of um, animated icons for you. Your theme is then the colouring of the pop-up. So if I were to select a brand colour, so if I just select a purpley colour, you can see that changing the brand colour would change the background and the button background and some text as well. If I were to then change this brand to a different colour, maybe make slightly more of a change, you can see that the background and the button background changes in line with that brand colour. So you can either select a colour for the whole brand and then the system will sort of give you a couple of different options there or what we're able to do is just change each specific area itself. Your title is then the title of the text here. Content is your description underneath and then you've got the text inside the button and the close button as well. So what we can then do is move over to triggers. So this is what's telling the pop-up to display for somebody. So first of all, you've got your start conditions. So either at once, or we can, we can check when a contact is leaving the site. So when the mouse is scrolling up to cross off the tab, or you've got once they've scrolled a percentage of the page, or they've been on the page for a certain number of seconds. You've then got the active period. So when this pop-up will begin to display and when it will no longer display. And you're also able to specify different days of the week that it does or does not display. Frequency. So you can either have with every page view or let's say I only see it twice per day. So if someone is consistently going back and visiting the same pages on your website multiple times a day, you can say, well, actually, I only want them to see it the first two times they visit that page that day to avoid it becoming annoying. Then you've got your, st your stop conditions. So either never stop, always show them this pop up whenever they land on this page, or either once they've done what you want them to do, which in this case is sign up for the newsletter, or once they've seen it a certain number of times. So let's say five times, for example. Then we can move along to your targeting. So this is choosing the pages on your website that you would like the pop up to display on. So if I click to add a new target page, you can see that we can choose the pop-up to display on your domain and then any of the URL after the domain is where you can choose a specific page. So if I left it like that, it would display on my home page. But if I wanted this pop-up to display on the About Us page, for example, I would just type About Us into the um, field here. So you don't need to enter in the domain again because it's already selected here. You just enter whatever is after the domain for your chosen page. You are able to add multiple, just like that. So now in this example, this pop-up would display on the home page and the About Us page. Now we can also actually specify the type of visitor that would see this pop-up. So you can either just say everybody, regardless of who they are, sees this pop-up. But if it suits your requirements, you can actually specify um, based on the following conditions. So we can include or exclude returning visitors. We can enable this pop up only after they've seen it a certain number of times. So if I only wanted someone to see this pop up once they've already been on the page twice, I would click to enable and change the number of page views to two. We can include or exclude specific browsers. We can include or exclude operating systems, devices and referrers. So referrers would be something like Google or Yahoo, a search engine. So once you've gone through those specific requirements, you can double check the name and description of your pop up under the details tab here. But if you are happy with the styling and you were happy with the content, you were happy with where it's going to display, how it's going to display, you're ready for it to go live. All you would need to do is click on the button here to change disabled to enabled. And that would begin displaying on your website live. So I won't actually make this purple pop up display on the Spotler website, so I won't enable and save it in this example. But it is super easy to get these pop ups live on your website.
if you are including a form pop-up or any type of pop-up, you are probably going to want to know how to read the results. So with our form type pop-up, what we can do over here is click to view the results. So we won't actually see any examples here because it's not actually been made live. I just wanted you guys to see the screen where you would, in theory, see your results coming through. So under the lead data tab here, you can filter the leads based on company and contact. You can have a look at all traffic and then UTM analysis as well. So your UTMs are a way for you to be able to tell how people are reaching your website. You'd have some general information, sort of statistics at the top, but all of that contact information that had been submitted within that form would actually be visible in the Gator Mail smart form environment itself. So to actually see who had submitted that form, we'd need to go back to your Gator Mail environment. You'd need to find your form. And over here, you've got the view smart form results button. So what this would show you is all of the contacts who had ever submitted um, information into your form and which information they'd actually submitted. So that's how you'd actually build one of our pop-ups and get that on your website. What I'm going to do now is switch presenter to Steve and he's going to share with us some of his wisdom. So give me just a moment. Hi everyone. Um, hopefully you can you can all see my screen now. Um, so my name's Steve. So I'm the marketing innovation manager for a company called CPI, and I look after the marketing for the UK and and Europe. And we are a Gator or or Spotler um, customer. Um, uh, and our business is effectively we're, we're a book printer. We print things um, where we have always found it hard to. Um, merge our, our physical product that we actually produce with with our digital, uh, which you know is is a uh, an issue that lots of businesses have as well. Um, and we had uh, we have two websites. One which is purely leads based and a sales website where it is all talking about all of our products and you know what and what we do there. And that is purely there to try and generate as many uh, new leads and prospects as we can. And then we have a second website. Uh, which is much more informative and goes more in the technical details of, of what we do. However, there is still a need to generate leads from that website as well. So um, we've got those. We've got those two there. Um, and what I wanted to just to do is just talk to you uh, about our pop-up journey, I suppose, um, about how we've used pop-ups, um, why we use them, um, and the benefits and the you know the sort of the tips that I've got um, and how they've worked for us. So the first thing that we did is we used pop-ups um, and all they did was redirect just to a, a new web page and that was their main function. So we would have it on a home screen um, or a page where we then wanted to try and get people onto maybe uh, another page that had a form fill in. Um, it could have been a, an estimate page or it could have just been very simply, I think the first pop-up we ever did was just to get someone onto the contact us page to try and fill it, to fill it in there. Um, as you can imagine, we had some success, but it was, you know, it was quite a, um, a slow route to try and get that inquiry. So once form fills were able to be added onto uh, a pop-up, it kind of really changed the game for us. Um, and we definitely straight away saw the benefit of, of what that could be. So we had to try and work out how we could better integrate that onto our onto our websites, working with, with Spot the Platform. Um, and again, it, 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 we looked at our what we produce as a product, which is physical, um, and how we can make that physical work with the digital, which is our shop front, uh, which is our websites, and especially when we've now gone into this this COVID world where everyone was at home, and you know the digital became so much more important. Um, we we had to work out how we did that. So the first thing we did actually was on the home screen. We we offered a uh, a sample pack, which was our physical side so people could physically get a sample pack and we had a pop-up which would then land on that home page where people could request that free sample pack and all they had to do was put in a smart uh, fill in the smart form so it was just a name we asked for um we had the email address and then we had a we asked for their address effectively um so that what we could then do um, is we could then send that pack 
to their home address or their office address or wherever it is that they may be because as a b2b business our hardest bit was people weren't in their offices so how do we then get our materials our physical to them and the pop-up with the smart form was the perfect way of doing that because it allowed us to get the information or the permission from the client or the prospect and send it straight to their doorstep so that's how we kind of first started with with, with the form fields and as you can imagine on your home screen, it's generally, and it should be the, the most viewed page on your website. Um, and in the period of time that we that we were running it, we had over 11,000 views on this pop-up. So, so that's a good, decent number. But as you can imagine, the click-through rate uh, was quite low. Um, reason being because as soon as people land, they were getting the pop-up, but it may not be what necessarily they were looking for. But we were really just targeting as many people as possible so we could get something physical to them. And the click-through rate was only, well, it was less than a percent in, in, in all honesty. Um, but out of that, we actually had roughly around 70 form fields from it. Um, and it actually generated from us then sending the physical packs to people through the pop-up. They then, after the pop-up, went into what was a workflow. Um, and it generated over £45,000 in revenue. Um, and we, we have traced that back to the fact that these were people that filled in a form from that pop-up, which was on our home screen. So, you know, we class that as, as a success, even though the, the click-through rate was quite low, it actually did the job we wanted because these were really cold prospects. People landed on that home page, and we just wanted to get information and get something physical to them with a the pop-up being the best way of doing it, which, which was great. So then um, what we did from that is we then used that idea and we then took it to our, our um, CPI print website, which is this one here, which is the more technical. And we've got a couple of uh, pop-ups on this website, which I'll go through now. So the first one we did was under this, uh, it was under get a quote. So our estimate one. So what would happen here is we've got on, we've pretty standard, I suppose, um, people are able to re request an estimate from us. Now, because uh, in the book printing world, there's obviously so many options you can have. We've got the smart form on here, so we get the people, get everyone's details where we can ask about the, you know, the, the work that they want to do. They can click submit. But what we found is people get to this page sometimes and they can go, hmm, you know, I'm not too sure. So what we actually did for this one is we don't want to lose anyone. So we actually, oh, that's good when the first time it doesn't come up. <laughs> Let me try that again. Um, so people could go onto the uh, onto the get an estimate or the quote, and then as they try to leave the page, always oh, technical issues, eh? When you don't want it to, well, that's not working. We we'll have to look into that. Uh, they, it would actually double capture it. So when people would go onto the cross, where they would get a pop, the pop up would then come up where they say that people didn't submit their inquiry. I'm going to try it one more time just to check it. Good job. Might have to come back to that one. It did work a minute ago. The form doesn't seem to be coming up, so we'll look into that. Um, so what we did on this one, it was when for people who were trying to leave the get an estimate page, so that we could kind of, if they've already filled it out, because it was a smart form, the form would already be pre-populated. So we did kind of get a bit of duplication, but we decided it's better to get duplication and get the right information than than to again get no information whatsoever. So we chose for the get an estimate, as soon as someone goes to click that, that cross, that it should come up. But uh, I need to check now the form. Oh, there you go. Might just be my internet. <laughs> so it would come up. So we'd come up saying, yes, we know she didn't submit. And because I've already filled some parts of forms out, you can see that you know it's already in here. So if someone had filled this form out, then as they go through, all of this is actually already filled in for them. So all they had to kind of do is go and click submit. And we haven't had one single person come back that was either annoyed or or found it, you know, um, because if they just click the cross because they've already clicked it, what's already happened is that they've already filled this bit in because they've already clicked submit. So it was kind of a bit of a fail safe, um, but it's worked out quite nicely because what we have found is people have got to this and then gone, oh, hang on, clicked on the cross, the pop-ups come up and then they filled it out. So we get we get that information. And also, it's also worked for us because there's uh, so many different bits that people can have here uh, for their quote. They might fill it in and they might actually then come come back to this part. And when the pop up comes up, they select a, a slightly different drop down. So 
we get that in as well and that goes straight through to our one of our teams who that who then price that up for them. so we have that as in the uh in the get an estimate uh section which has worked really nicely um then what we also have is in our self-publishing so this is for people that you know have written their book but you know they don't belong to a publishing house we have a timed one on here which comes up like this which is the get in touch one so it comes up after five seconds i think it is um where it comes in and people can, can then just put in um about what it is that they're after so self-publishers are effectively they're just authors and they've written their book but they don't have maybe the backing of a publisher yet because you know it's the first book they've ever written or the first thing that they you know uh, uh yeah the first yeah it's just the first book they've ever done or you know maybe they've done a couple but they prefer to keep it in-house themselves so this just allows them to put in a nice bit of information just just a name a phone number an email address and then they can free type a message um so whether that means they just want someone to get in contact maybe we've done a book from before it could even be that you know someone that knows done a book but it just leaves it open and it's nice and sort of friendly to them not so much um where they know exactly what they want um which is the get an estimate these self-publishers a lot of them don't necessarily know exactly what they want so they just want to speak to someone really and find out what the options are so so that's the that's the kind of pop-up we've used here but again as you can see we, we make sure we put a form in so that we're capturing people's information dropping that cookie and, and finding a bit more about them then the third one that we use is actually in our sustainability uh section where it comes up straight away um so for book printing and you know it is for um, pretty much every industry sustainability is is definitely a hot topic uh, within the book industry or the printing industry it very much so because of effectively paper and trees being cut it gets a bad name um, but a lot of our publishers are wanting newsletters and they want to see what we're doing as a business in order to um, to promote sustainability and, and everything else that we're doing on that kind of green side. So we decided on our sustainability page to have it come up straight away because we really want to start pushing this newsletter. It's the first time we've ever tried it. So we wanted just to get, get up there straight away. And what this newsletter actually does, instead of it just being, um, uh, where they click submit and then it gets sent to them in their email this is actually gated content so we've got it set up so that our competitors can't view it so we've blocked their domain so they can't actually get it as well but once they click submit it should then take them through and it takes them through to the pdf of the newsletter which is which is available there so that worked really well for our, our newsletter um and on the newsletter side, we have a, about just short of 18% click through rate, which works really nicely. Um, the estimate I forgot to mention earlier, we've had we get about 36% click through rate as well on that um, on that pop up or on that sort of side. So we use pop ups on those three different areas and they're slightly different. So the get a quote one, like I said, is one that um, comes up once they go towards the exit the page because we, we want to make sure that we get their information uh, because we do want to be quoted you know we don't want anyone else to be quoted on their work we want to do it so it gives us that double chance there the uh, self-publishing one is more that friendly pop-up where it's kind of you know we understand that the audience that we that would arrive on that page maybe doesn't necessarily know what they're really after in terms of of the product that we that we would be able to provide them so we have it a little bit more open and then the newsletter because this was the first one we ever done we wanted to make sure we get as many people that subscribe to our newsletters as possible we also don't want our um, competitors to sort of see some of the information that we have on our sustainability side so we, we gated it as well but they all form around uh, having those form fields in there so they're, they're, they're the pop-ups that we use and, and, and kind of how we use them um, I've kind of got four things really that I would say are like the learnings when it comes to the pop-ups. Um, number one is I believe pop-ups are very underappreciated and valued by a lot by a lot of organisations. Um, I think they had a bit of a stigma just being annoying, but actually they do work um, and they can generate you revenue. So I'm a big fan of pop-ups, and we continue to use them and we will use them. Um, secondly, I think if you're going to put a pop-up in, it has to have a a purpose um, it can't just be there for the sake of having a pop-up it's got to have a genuine purpose um, for for the visitor so 
uh, so for example, the newsletter that's on now, the purpose of the pop-up for us is obviously to gain their to gain their information, but the purpose for them is to get them actually to a newsletter. They don't want to be bouncing around all over the place. Um, so make sure your pop-up has a proper purpose. If you do a pop-up, I'd strongly recommend that you, you supercharge your pop-up by adding a form in. Um, make sure that you're getting the information that you need from your from your audience or your visitors on your web page. And make sure it's information that um, you and your team can use. So you know, don't don't go and get um, get information that isn't going to you know help make the sale or, or or not be able to get back to them. So for example, um, on our one that we had on the home page when it was active, we knew that we only really needed their first line of address and a postcode to to be able to send uh, our physical sample to them because by using that information, we're able to gather the rest of the information. We didn't want to overload them, especially on, a, on the homepage pop-up with too many forms to be filling, uh, too many fields to be filling in. When it comes to get an estimate, we're able to put more fields in because there's more that we need to know to be able to generate that, that estimate. But um, So just be mindful of that. And then the last one is know your audience. Um, hopefully you do know the audience of the people that are visiting your web page um, and specifically that page. Um, make sure you know who they are and what they like. So going back to the, the self-publishing one, we know what the self-publishers are like and we know who they tend to be. So we made sure that the pop-up that came up on self-publishing isn't too intrusive. We're not asking them for too much um, and, it's, and it's keeping it quite open. So, so that would be kind of be my learnings from pop-ups. Don't be afraid to use them. They do work and they are great um, when, when done properly and they can definitely uh, generate revenue for you. So, so that, that's really it on my side as a, as a Spotlight customer. You can see how I've used them. Um, we, we have a free on this website. Um, they do, they've generated us revenue um, and we'll continue to, to use them. So well, that, that's kind of it for me on that sort of side. Hopefully Perfect. Can... Thanks so much, Steve. You're welcome. Um, Does any questions? To... Feel free to put them in. <laughs> yes, exactly that. If anyone's got any questions, please do feel free to type them out, and we can either answer them here or feel free to um, ping me over an email afterwards. Um, happy to answer any queries.